One of my favorite things in the world to do is watch Friends. I know it's been off for years and years. It's not even around, but I still find myself binge watching old episodes. And I was thinking about this today and thinking it's the predictability of the friends in the circle, right? You have Chandler with his quirkiness, Monica with her type A of just everything has to be so neat and tidy and organized. It's Phoebe's ability to make you laugh at her silly songs. Ross always comes in with those smart comments and Joey and him and his food, like it is just so hilarious. And of course, Rachel, she just brings everybody together and it's just such this beautiful, cohesive team of people. And it's why I wanted to come on and share with you today that I have an opportunity for you to find your friends in the content creation space. So if you are thinking about creating your first or your next digital course, I don't want you to miss this opportunity because Amy Porterfield just opened the doors for registration for her course, Confident Bootcamp. And I'm actually offering a special bonus for anyone that registers for the course Course Confident Bootcamp through my special link. So I want you to go to crystalprofit.com forward slash Amy dash bootcamp to register. That's crystalprofit.com forward slash Amy dash bootcamp. And what you're going to find when you get there is I have this special bonus private podcast series. It's called Money Mindset for Creators. So I want you to go register for Amy's bootcamp download the podcast and immediately start listening to it because what this training is set up to do is to help you get your mind right about monetizing your content, making money so that you can fuel your content creation dreams. So go to crystalprofit.com forward slash Amy dash bootcamp to register for course confident. And I cannot wait for you to find your friends and find the people that will be there for you. Do you see what I did there? Yeah. Nice little friends segue connection. Go to crystalprofit.com forward slash Amy dash bootcamp. And I cannot wait to see you inside. Okay. Let's get into today's episode. Do you want to know the secret behind having a successful podcast? consistency. Consistency 100%. Like that is the secret sauce. If you've been looking for the magic ingredient, it is consistency. Just showing up when you say you're going to show up over and over and over again. This is how you're going to see growth. It's how you're going to see your engagement within your community that you've built around your podcast. Like it's just the secret to everything. So congratulations. Now you know the secret to podcasting. But today I want to talk about how to be consistent with your podcast. And I have a few really important things that I want to share with you today. So let's get right on to it. Welcome to the Profit Podcast, where we teach entrepreneurs how to start, launch, and market their podcast. I'm your host, Crystal Profit, and I'm so excited that you're here. Thanks for hanging out with me today. Because if you've been thinking about creating a podcast for a while, well, I'm so glad you found this show. Think of this as the shortcut slash time-saving version of searching Google and YouTube for hours and hours trying to figure out the world of podcasting. Trust me, as a busy mama of three, I get it. You don't have a lot of time to be spent or wasted, I should say, searching the web, trying to find all the right ideas and all the amazing things that are out there, and you just end up overwhelmed. Trust me, I've been there, done that, took home the souvenir. But this podcast is going to help you in practical ways because twice a week we'll be delivering episodes that are going to give you steps to help you create a podcast your audience can't wait to listen to. So let's get right to it, shall we? Have you been wanting to start a podcast? You've been thinking about it. It feels right. You just know This is the next thing that my business needs. Well, I encourage you to sign up for my five-day podcast boot camp. 
This is a thing that you have been looking for. It is a five day video series where I walk you through exactly how to start, launch, and market your podcast. And I throw in some more information about planning strategies and being consistent and how you can make the most out of your podcast from day one. So sign up for our five day Create Your Podcast Bootcamp at crystalprofit.com slash podcast bootcamp. And do it already. You know that you've been wanting to. So just bite the bullet and join us. So like I said in the introduction, I have officially shared with you the secret to podcasting. And that is consistency. Like I know that sounds so simple. And you're saying, Crystal, really? Really? Is it that easy? And the answer is yes. (laughs) If you just keep showing up, Something is bound to happen, whether that is you get more listeners or you get more downloads or you just finally have someone tell you your podcast is awful. You need to stop because I've seen that happen, too. So, I mean, something is eventually going to happen if you keep showing up week after week, month after month, year after year. So today I want to talk about the positive side of consistency and how to actually be consistent. So why is consistency so important? So we hear this all the time. Consistency is key. But why is that? Why does it matter? Well, it's pretty simple because your audience needs to know that you're going to show up for them. That way they can turn around and show up for you. Because I've listened to so many podcasts that are in their infancy, like they're just getting started, they're trying to figure things out. And the ones that don't make it a year later have something very similar in common. They just quit showing up. They quit showing up consistently. Like I've seen podcasts that go from having five to 10 episodes right out of the gate, right? Like they launch when they have a super successful launch maybe they even get on the new and noteworthy and that was their goal and then it's like yay but then stuff starts to happen in their life and then they stop showing up and then like I said it's a year later and they're not around their podcast is still out there but they haven't published anything in six months or a year (laughs) so I mean it's it's just not rocket science y'all consistency is the key to podcasting. So as a result, like I said, what do you think happened? Like their listener base either got confused, like, okay, what is happening? And they just moved on or they forgot about their podcast altogether. And that makes me so sad to think that there are podcasts out there with like seven or eight episodes or less than 20 episodes, and then they were just abandoned. Y'all, I want to go adopt these abandoned, like, is there a rescue for podcasts that someone just abandoned? Like, how can we revive these? It just makes me so sad because people just stop showing up. So I don't want either of those things to happen to you. I don't want anybody to move on from you or forget about your podcast. So today I'm going to give you five ways that you can stay consistent with your podcast. So number one is you have to commit to the work. Simple as that. You have to commit with a capital C. And I tell my students and my clients this all the time when they're just getting started. You have to commit to your podcast before you do anything else. Don't pick a day of the week to publish If you aren't 100, no, 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 a thousand percent committed to showing up on that day every single week, don't commit to publishing every day if that's not realistic for your schedule. Come on, guys, like, let's be smart about this. If you can't do a daily podcast six months down the road, then don't commit to doing it on day one, right? And the last thing I tell them is it's better to create a realistic publishing schedule than to burn out because you overcommitted yourself in your podcasting journey. Because sadly, I've seen a lot of people do this. I've seen they either are kind of, you know, 
one foot out the door, one foot in, like I'm kind of committed, I'm kind of not. The idea of podcasting sounds fun, but then it sounds like it's a lot of work, like they get going, right? I'm, and if you've been doing this for a while, you've experienced this. And if you're brand new, you're going to experience this. You're going to have times where you're just like, oh my gosh, like I didn't realize, you know, I need to put out a new episode tomorrow and, you know, it needs to go up. Well, I don't want you being that person that says, it's fine. I'll just publish it in a few days. No one will notice the difference. Guys, stop it. I want you to be consistent and commit to the day that you're going to publish. Maybe this is like me being super tough love, like rigid rules. Like, yes, I'm strict. I'm very strict about this. I don't care if I have to stay up until midnight to get this thing published. That That is on me. Like, that is my bad. I did. I planned wrong. Like, I need to go back to the drawing board. Like, where did I not plan out my episodes or, you know, in my editorial calendar? Where did I mess up? Did I not put enough time for me to edit? Did I not put enough time for recording? Did I not batch enough episodes? Like I need to see where the system broke down, but I'm still committed to publishing this podcast every Tuesday and Thursday. And now that's like a quick side note. I've been doing this for a long time. I don't want you to commit to doing more days than you can handle. And honestly, if you're just getting started, this is your very first podcast. You're new to this whole world. I don't want you publishing more than once a week, like once a week at minimum and at maximum. Like that is all I want you to do when you're very first getting started because there's just some things that you need to learn and you can always change it later, but I highly recommend publishing at least once a week when you get started. No more, no less. Okay, so that's the first thing we have to do. We have to commit to our podcast in order to be consistent. The second thing I want to talk about is understanding your why. This is so important because there's going to be days where you don't want a podcast. (laughs) Either you don't want to do the editing because it takes too long or you aren't in the mood for an interview. You just you feel bad or you feel tired or you're just too exhausted to create one more marketing graphic for your latest episodes. Like it is a fact of life that there are going to be times in this podcasting journey where you're faced with outside circumstances that are beyond your control, right? You have a sick kid or you had three interviews in a row cancel because they had scheduling conflicts or your equipment stops working or your horse from a cold. Like this is real life right now. My husband has a sinus infection and all three of my kids, like they're in the cycle of either getting a cold or getting over a cold. So like this is a real thing in our house right now and my throat has been a little itchy today, but I'm still here. I got my water and I am recording because I am committed to getting this done. But you could also have things like your internet goes out or your guest internet connection gets messed up. Like I feel like I've seen and experienced so many setbacks in this journey of podcasting. But it is at those times, like right when everything is just you're up, you know what, creek without a paddle, right? (laughs) It is during those times that you have to find that deeper reason of why you're doing all of this. And it's got to be more than just to get more downloads or to have a popular podcast. It Like why? Why are you really doing this? Why are you committed to showing up every week? Because those answers, like no one else can answer those questions for you. No one can. You have to understand your why. You have to have a deeper meaning tied to your podcast other than something that's just surface level. But I wanted to share with you my why to show you what this could look like. And I I don't think that I've ever really shared this. Maybe I've shared bits and pieces of this in another place. But um, I just wanted to share this with you today. Just full transparency. This is my why. But 
I'm committed to showing up every week for my audience for these reasons. And the first one is this is a lot of fun for me. Like that's just, I know that might sound silly to you, but y'all, this is, podcasting is so much fun. It is so much fun for me. And I hope that you see that um, in everything that I do, whether it's the podcast or YouTube, or you see me on Facebook Live or Instagram, like wherever it is that you follow me. Like, I hope that you see that because this has just been the coolest ride of my life. Like it's so much fun to do something that I really truly enjoy, but also the opportunities that have come to me in the last year would have never existed without podcasting. So that's my first reason. It's so much fun and just so many cool doors have opened for me in the last six months to a year. And I'm just so grateful to podcasting because of the opportunities it's creating. But the second reason is I want to help people who have the exact same questions I did when I got started. I don't want people feeling lost or dumb or stupid or overwhelmed with technology and they're ready to throw their computer against the wall. Like I don't want... I don't want you to experience any of that with podcasting, right? Because I've been there. Like, where you are in your journey, I have been there. And I probably messed it up 10 times worse than anyone else ever could. So (laughs) I just don't want you to make the same mistakes that I did. I want this process to be faster for you. I want you to have so much more success than I ever could have even imagined in the very, like, beginning of my podcast. And I just, I want to help you out. So that's another, that's the second part of my why and why I'm so committed to showing up. But the third reason is I'm generally curious to see what other people create and the messages that they are able to put out into the world through podcasting. Because it just, I love that there's a podcast about whatever you want to be, like whatever you want to have. I've seen some crazy podcast ideas. I've seen some boring podcast ideas. I've seen funny ones. I've seen serious ones. Educational. Oh my gosh, y'all. Like if you took away all the other platforms, you know, social media, YouTube, Google, like everything, do you realize how much you could really learn Being a woman in business comes with its own unique set of challenges, but also so many opportunities. We get ahead by leaning in to what makes us different from business as usual. I'm Samantha Hartley, host of Profitable Joyful Consulting, inviting you to a special six-episode series exploring the experience of being a woman in business. You want to hear from women consultants who've hit a million dollars, who sell six-figure engagements, or who've broken their own revenue ceilings? Yeah, those are my clients, and they'll be sharing too. Join me for six must-listen episodes that tackle key challenges for women consultants. Follow Profitable Joyful Consulting on your favorite podcast app. Just by listening to podcasts? Like, seriously. Like, there's so much out in the world of podcasting, and it just... It just blows my mind all the time. But I'm sure that you know, like we recently, um, we opened Profit Podcasting, which is the digital course for a few days. And I'm just totally blown away by the podcast that the students in the course, they want to create because someone has a podcast for nonprofit organizations. Like if someone wants to create a nonprofit, nonprofit, then she helps them get started. And then there's another student who has a podcast all about beautiful, edible landscaping. Y'all, edible landscaping. This is so cool. Like, she wants to help you grow a garden in your backyard or your front yard, wherever you want to grow it, that is beautiful but also edible. Like, you can eat whatever it is that you put into the ground, which just, it blows my mind. And then we have another student who is aspiring to help other music teachers improve the learning experience for kids in the classroom. Y'all, I can't quit on those people, right? I can't quit on those people that are looking for a way to share their message with the world because, y'all, this is just so much bigger than me. It's bigger than all of us. 
And that's what keeps me coming back every week to help people just like you start, launch, and market your podcast. But okay, like we're going down an emotional rabbit hole and I told myself I wouldn't go down that way. So, but that is just, that is my why. So I want you to know and understand your why so you can keep showing up even on those hard days. Okay, the third way for you to be consistent with your podcast is to plan ahead. Now, I'll be the first to tell you that I've not always been a planner. For most of my childhood, my teenage years, and even into my early 20s, I was kind of the fly by the seat of your pants girl. Um, I definitely didn't plan out my weeks or my meals or my workouts or the hours I spent in a day doing something else or when I was going to do laundry or go to the grocery store, like all the things like I didn't, I didn't plan those things out when I was younger. But having said that, I truly see both sides of the coin here because I've been in situations where I am just reactive to everything going on around me. And trust me, you feel like you're drowning, like you're barely able to keep your head above water. And like I said a second ago, I just got finished launching my digital course. And while I had planned everything for the launch for the like all summer, the past three months, I'd been working on the launch. I hadn't given myself time to schedule creating content during the actual launch of the podcast. So like we like in real time, like we're still in the middle of this launch while I'm recording this episode. And for the last few days, I have been super reactive, not as organized as I normally am. And the reason why I'm telling you this is because we like, we're never going to be perfect. I'm not trying to sit here and like profess at you from, you know, my, my podium that's so much higher than new. No guys, like I'm telling you like, plan ahead because I need to hear this too. Like it's my own fault that I have been reactive this last week because I did not plan very well. I planned everything for the launch, but I didn't plan to make sure that I was staying on track with my podcast episodes. So just know that there's going to be times in your journey that you're going to feel super organized and you're on track and everything falls just smoothly into place. But there's going to be other times when you have no idea if you created content for the next week or if you remembered to schedule your last episode. Like it happens. But the reason I want you to plan ahead is because you can create so much more content in an organized fashion if you're always ahead of the game. So that brings me to my next point. So my fourth point is I want you to batch record and edit your episodes. This is super key to consistency, and I wish that I would have done this from the very beginning, but a batch recording was a total game changer for me, and I've talked about it many times about being reactive in the podcast, and I really believe that batching was the saving grace for me not burning out in the last six months. Like, really and truly, that is the only reason why I have been able to keep the momentum with this podcast is because I am batch recording episodes because I learned how to batch just multiple episodes at one time. I record them all in one day and I edit them as time is permitted in my schedule. Like today, I just recorded the episode you heard before this and now I'm recording this one and I'm going to record one more. So I'm recording three episodes today. And the reason why I do this is, y'all, this relieves so much pressure off of constantly creating content, right? It gives you the ability to use your creative juices, like when they're in their prime. So if you need to plan episode, plan three or four of them in a row, right? Because your brain is already in that kind of like, oh, I need to plan. What other ideas can I come up with? What other stories can I have? Instead of switching tasks like your brain is like okay we're going to record then we're going to edit then we're going to publish then we're going to write copy then we're going to do no don't do that because your brain gets confused they're like wait we're switching back and forth like you're it's almost like your brain is trying to multitask but if you do one thing 
again, if you haven't read the book, the one thing, I encourage you to go check it out because that is where you will learn so much about everything that I'm talking about right now. This is where um, I'd already been batching by the time I read that book, but oh my gosh, it just helped. It like amplified it. it. It's like batching on steroids. That book is so amazing. But it just relieves so much pressure off of you. You can stay focused like in your zone of genius long enough to produce some really killer content. But I don't know about you, but my time is limited for me to dedicate to the podcast. Like, y'all know, I've told y'all before, I have three kids and thankfully they're all back in school. Like it's no longer summertime, but I still struggle with finding time to record episodes in a quiet house. There are only a few chunks of time when it's, you know, everybody's gone. It's just me. There's no interruptions. There's no doctors or dentist appointments or anything going on like that. So batch outlining, like batch planning everything and batch recording have literally saved my sanity when it comes to being consistent with this podcast. So if you haven't tried it yet, I urge you to try it because it is a total, total game changer. Okay, the last thing I want to talk about today, the fifth way for you to be consistent with your podcast is keep enough margin in your schedule to keep up with your editorial calendar. This kind of goes back to planning ahead, but I want to make sure that you don't overcommit yourself to too many things. Like, don't say you're going to do a daily show if that's not realistic, but also don't try to do too many things if you're just getting started. So when I started last year, I started with one episode a week for the first almost year of my podcast. Um, Yeah, it was almost the, the first year. And the only reason why I decided to do two episodes per week is because the editing and the marketing have been more streamlined and I can get them done a lot faster than I could have at the beginning. But I'm also super, super, super stingy with my calendar. I don't say yes to things that I don't really want to do. Personally, professionally, whatever. Like I, unless I see it benefiting me, my family, you know, like spending quality time with the kids, spending quality time with my husband, spending quality time with family, like those things, like that's, that's different. I say yes to those, like the things that I really want to do, but I always make sure that I have time in my calendar for the things that need to happen for this podcast. So prioritizing tasks for the podcast have helped me also create plenty of margin in my calendar to make everything happen. Like I used to sit around and, you know, maybe watch Netflix at night, you know, during the week, like after the kids have gone to bed. But instead of doing that, I go to bed early and then wake up earlier the next morning and work on planning episodes for the podcast or planning out, you know, like content ideas or catching up on emails that I had with people that were telling me like, oh, you know, this really helped me like this piece of content or looking in Facebook groups for new content, like all the things like, and y'all have heard me, we, it was like, what, two episodes ago, we talked about how to plan content ideas, but I just want to make sure that you're not wasting time. Like you're not doing things that aren't going to help you in the long run with your podcast. So don't tell me that you don't have time to plan and record and edit and do all these things if you're wasting time doing things that don't matter. So there's my tough love. I felt I felt it coming. I knew it was probably going to be in this episode, but I felt y'all needed some tough love. So just know it comes from a place of learning and it comes from a place of I want you to succeed. I don't want to be, I don't want to come and find your podcast a year from now abandoned in the podcast rescue because you couldn't keep up and you couldn't keep doing it because it got too overwhelming. Take these things into consideration and I promise being consistent with your podcast will be so much easier. So again, just don't overcommit yourself in any area of your life like whatsoever. So just a quick recap of the five ways to stay consistent. Number one, you have to commit to the work. Absolutely have to. 
Number two, you need to understand your why. Why are you doing this? You need to know so you can show up on those days when you really don't want to show up. Because trust me, I've had to grab for my why a few times before and it's helped me push myself through when I'm really tired and I don't want to show up. The third thing is plan ahead. The fourth thing is batch record and edit your episodes. I promise you this can change your life. The fifth thing is keep enough margin in your schedule to keep up with your calendar. Whew, y'all, I love you guys. I want to see you succeed. But that does it for this episode. So if this is your first time tuning in, I'd love for you to subscribe and hear what other fun things we're going to be talking about in the coming weeks. I'd love for you to leave us a review. Tell us which episode has been your favorite. Tell us what you want to learn about podcasting. Tell us whatever it is that you want to tell us. But wherever you're listening to this podcast, I urge you to leave us a review because that helps us get this content out in front of other people faster. Make sure you sign up for the free five-day podcast boot camp. Check out the other resources we have in the resource library. And if you don't know where to find any of this, then go to crystalprofit.com slash episode 83 and check out the show notes. Everything will be there. And remember, keep it up. We all have to start somewhere. Hey, Profit Podcast listeners, thanks for sticking around a little bit after the episode to hear this special message because I want to hear from you. We are starting a new segment called Fan Mail Shoutouts, and I want to hear from you and I want to hear your questions. What do you want to know? What questions have you been dying to ask me? So here's how to make this happen. Go to the app where you're listening to this podcast right now. Go there. I'll wait a second. Okay. Now, once you're there, you're going to see a hyperlink at the top of the episode description that says, send Crystal a text message. And that's all I want you to do. Send me a text. It could be casual, informal. It could be totally anonymous. Or if you want, you can include your name and the name of your podcast or content, wherever you are creating. And I will give you a special shout out in an upcoming episode. So again, go to the show notes for where you're listening to this episode right now. And it will say, send Crystal a text message. And I cannot wait to hear from you and give you a shout out in an upcoming segment of fan mail shout outs.